Tried out for so long, 10 months is a long time, but fantastic to see him back at the same time. He's, we know what he's capable of. Previous world champion, unbelievable racket skills. And as you say, in a best of three format, over best of five, I obviously fancy Paul, his, his physical capabilities are, are staggering. But Karim Abdel Gawad in a best of three, I think this, this is a potential banana skin. If Gawad can keep the ball out the tin, put Paul under the type of pressure to the front and back that we know he can do, um, the potential is there. It's going to be a really interesting match. It's intriguing, this one. What do you think tactically Paul Cole will look to, to do with Gawad? We know what we get from Gawad. You know, he'll be playing the rhythm that he likes to, chopping and changing. I mean, he, you know, he, does, he just plays the Gawad style. And if, it, and if he's on, he's a nightmare for anyone, as we know. What would Paul Cole be looking to do, given it's also the best of three? I think he's going to be looking to extend the rallies. He has to look to extend the rallies and use his physical capabilities. He's not going to want to leave Gawad in any positions at the front of the court where it's loose because Gawad is so dangerous whether he's hitting short or long from those positions. So Paul will be looking to play nice and straight, use the height when he needs to, really plant himself on that tee and, and try not to be moved off it. Gawad will be looking to do the opposite, taking the game to Paul. I think the only way he can, he can cause some damage is, is by stepping up the court, really, really playing that high tee line uh, and trying to... Trying to utilise his skills from that mid-court range but for me I think Paul probably have too much even in the best of three but if Gawad can produce something tonight then uh, yeah produce that quality where Paul Paul feel the pressure and, 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 and he's felt the pressure here before you know previously look at last year with Victor, Victor. Krua Victor, Victor played unbelievable and put him under that pressure and, and Gawad's capable of doing the same so Intrigued to see what happens. Well, the first game, absolute key, I would say, for the Gawad campaign against Paul Cole. But the players are now ready for this second match coming on for part two, bottom half of the draw of round two. I'm going to hand down once again to Alan Thatcher. Ladies and gentlemen, our second match is about to begin. We have two former world number ones First of all, from Egypt, please welcome Kareem Abdel Gawad. And his opponent, our number four seed from New Zealand, twice a champion here at Canary Wharf, please welcome Paul Cole. Well, welcome back to the second match out of four this evening in round two of the Gillen Markets Canary Wharf Classic 2023. Up next, we've got a very interesting affair between these two players, both possessing real different attributes to their game, playing different styles. One player in particular, the Egyptian Karim Abdel Gawad, been out of the game for quite a significant period of time as Joey and Daryl were just talking us through due to a foot injury that's now all healed and he needed quite a significant time to let that tissue in his foot build up and regenerate so that he could bounce around back on court and that he is both of these players fresh off of that ball open last week in Cairo well the man in orange bright orange at that has been former world number one from Egypt 29 years of age now. Very deadly player. 454 matches on the PSA World Tour. Just showing how long that he's been around for. 2008, he turned professional. 31 years old. Kicking on, but I'm not going to say that that's old because it's not. Very dangerous player, particularly loves this front left hand corner in his backhand. He shapes up and can hit absolutely anything. And I'll tell you now, you'll not know what he's going to play from there. 
watch out for that area. Paul Cole, this man right here, he'll certainly be watching out for that area of the court. Some funky undershorts going on for the Kiwi. Just to keep his muscles intact. Superman, as he's known, possesses a significant diving capabilities, which he's Off time. looked to get under control. From New Zealand, the number four seed also has been number one in the world, currently at five. Just a little bit of a dip in the rankings. I don't want to say in form, but kudos to everyone around them, everyone in that top ten, really, really pushing the boundaries and progressing the game, developing new attributes all the time and new new ways to attack and play the game. Slightly higher win percentage for the Kiwi, 70.9, which is really impressive. Anything above 70 and your your kind of top drawer squash. Daryl and Joey just talking through a little bit about what these players are going to look to do to each other in terms of tactics and how they're going to use the court. Which will explain more about that. Very tasty head-to-head. -head. Nine matches in total. Cole just sneaking that a little bit. But that is certainly one of the tighter head-to-heads that we've got at the minute. 67-minute match time. Obviously, majority of those being best of three. They've actually only played best of best of five, sorry. They've only played best of three once, which was back in 2019 at the World Tour Finals. Yoad taking that two love, proving that maybe he is suited better to the best of three. Time. Well, joining me is Joey Barrington off of platform, and he flew down actually to the comms box. Yeah, I'm getting getting pretty good at that. A lot of coaching platforms out there. Squash Skills has been around the most original one, and it offers a huge amount from advice and coaching sessions, training sessions of the top players in the world, in the men's and women's tours, but also terrific coaches. And it's suited for everyone of all levels. Play will start so in 30 scan seconds. Scan the QR code there, find out more, start your 14 day free trial. Highly recommended and uh, a really, really fun and educating platform. Play will start in 15 seconds. The Gillen Markets so Canary John Wharf Classic Mazzarella 2023. Charge the second match. He is match. flanked by Jason Foster Paul in the VR Carl position. New Zealand to serve Karim Abdel Gawad of Egypt to receive. Best of three games. Love all. Well, we're off. Very bright shirt from. And Hawaii. out. One love. Straight in with the attacks, fighting that boss round. Certainly took Cole and myself by surprise. Gonna see more of that for sure. Can't imagine Gawad's gonna want this to be getting into a physical battle with Cole. This is a big test for Paul Cole's mental side of the game after disappearing against Joel Makin. He's down at five in the world. And he's up against someone that is 
been away from the tour for such a long period of time, watching all these players playing and wanting to get back there, and he is now. Just to throw it in, it's, oh, look at that. Well it's the best of three. I, I, I think the uh, but banana could be out. Too it could low. be very slippery. Cole. I think this match is a, a test for them both. Gawad obviously on the comeback, looking to cement his place back at the top of the game. And I think what better way to test yourself than against someone who also has been there. You did see, of course, Gawad have that five set battle with Mohamed El Shabagi. So squash is there. Physicality, you've got to say, was also there. The pace that Shabagi was playing at that tournament was unbelievable. Start to finish, so impressive. Gawad was able to upset that rhythm and be disruptive as we know he can be. Very attacking player. Stroke probably feeling guy. like he's got a bit of a point to prove as you said Joey down Hand at five now he'll not have been particularly impressed with his form of late as they lose into to Macon who is in form but even before that Motor City Open reaching the quarterfinal losing to Fares Dezuki again in five sets no let not particularly poor results but not by his standard. He'd be particularly Two, happy, three. I can't imagine that. Yes, lad. Two, three. <laughs> yeah, but you committed yourself pretty quickly to him as well. <laughs> Two, three. Down. Down. Yes, I am sure. I am. Three all. <laughs> well, the advantage John Mazzarella has, although he's high up, he's still around tin height. Paul Colt. Losing his balance, he's under pressure there, and that's what happens with hand out. You know, these players have not fought to play Gawad for over a year, and not just he's in against them, he's just got that bit extra when he's got time on the ball. Another player that was playing down in Cornwall, it's got to be the Cornish air. We saw Mezen Hisham, his opponent in that exhibition, fly through, tested well by Muller, and he is seeing it like a football. that exhibition just out of curiosity the black falcon but it was there was a lot of controversy i can't go into that now Cole, this one. Yeah. That's just what he needs to so just build a bit of confidence, get his four corners and going and four. working his opponent. Positive rally for Kiwi. So important that you can get Goad on that diagonal stretch as much as possible. So 
such a contrast with the two players' racket no preparation. No, no, he's playing in his own space. That's a solid decision. He's leaving the Five ball. Four. In the middle of the court, good penetrating length. It does take a great, great line, this court. Left, 5-4. Any, any malice in that conversation from these two at all. Back to what I was saying with the racket prep, Joey. You can see Cole so organized. Racket always up, it barely drops below his waist, actually. It's always just poised in that semi-ready position and then up it goes. And then you've got the relaxed Gawad sort of drooping around and then it comes up a bit late and he whips it through. All that bit stiffer, more regimented. Oh. Oh, the crowd enjoying that one. Out. Five all. That's where he is deadly. He's got this real deception with his movement because he it's like he moves on it late on the volleys, having played him. Tried to play him a long time ago, but yeah, it's Another kind of natural asset that he has. He's had it from a young age. Times his movement from the tee beautifully. And uses it as a deceptive side as well as his swing. It certainly is deceptive because you wouldn't put him down as one of the faster players on tour. And sometimes his movement even looks really lethargic, but it's so subtle in how he's timing it onto the ball coupled with how well he anticipates Down. it and reads it. He was too early on that one, and that's why he's gone too close and had to do a deep and squat. Out, six, five. I've seen him take it in from a deep squat, though. That's quite a famous position for him when he does take it in. PJ would have been all over that. He'd have loved the fact that he was sinking his knees. Yes, lad. Six, five. Do you think Cole can make it back to the top? Well, there, there is murmurings of changing it to hourly rankings, so it could be open for any of the players. Down from monthly to weekly. It's really exciting at the top of the game for the men now. It's you know they're all stacked up. Just looking at the points, and the top five are literally on and top of each other. All. So they've all got an opportunity. Diego Elias just still waiting for his and. This tournament is dictated by whatever happens with Mohamed El Shabagi and Staff Rassal. But got players that have won majors, been world number ones, and they're stacking in behind each other. It makes these, these events very, even more exciting. Don't necessarily know who's gonna, gonna win it. Stroke to call. Uh, he's going to review this, I think. Well, he couldn't get quick. out and round you to the ball. Should, well, I would have reviewed it. No, I saw that differently. He couldn't get round you. He should review this. I would have reviewed this. It's a little bit of kind of him and trying to get out, six. Paul Cole trying to get in. and It's quite a generous decision. So the stroke to Cole, 7-6 in this first game. Be intrigued to know where Gawad can get to if he has a good run with his body in this next kind of season, two seasons. 
Well, he's only going to get better as well with every tournament he plays. And that's, that's the great thing about it, as you said. If he, if he can keep his body in check, that match sharpness, match fitness Eight as well. Six. You, you can play practice matches and everything that you like at home, but there is nothing like actually being there on the stage. It just brings a different level of pressure and intensity. Points and money on the line. Big crowd. It's all getting banked up for Gawad now. Out. Out. Well, go ahead, just Nine conceding six. that one. Full call, getting a bit of daylight. Very steady start. That's exactly what Cole needs, to be honest. Steady the ship. Really just close the court down like that. Just really good tight length. Oh, he's lost his footing there and slipped over. Hopefully he's okay. I mean, that was a real, it's a lovely shot as he comes in. But absolutely, the foot went away nine. from him. Just never know what's going to happen to a player there. As I've said, I've seen some serious injuries. Hands, good recovery. Oh my word! There's the dive. He's lost his footing. And Gawad very, very quick to that. Just threading that trickle around. So, look at this. That was the dive response from the trickle and a quick whip through. Eight nine. Smooth operator. Look at that, Lisa. Very, very cool. Great right. adaption of hands. I thought up until that point. Call it actually structured the rally so well. But you can't give go at anything. These tickly hands. Go at the sort of player that you always want to go and have a solo practice after you've watched him play. Not that it'll be any good, but it just gives you such inspiration. Well, Paul Cole really utilizing his recovery, keeping himself in the rally. This is starting to really hot up now. Tempo's just gone up a notch. It's great whip from Cole. Another great whip. <laughs> yeah, it's always a bit Nine. of a, an easy option, Left. isn't it? The old turning ploy to get the let ball. Well, Gawad hasn't got his towel with him. Someone's taken his towel. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's obviously... Yeah, I mean, that's you've got to keep your eye yeah. on. I mean, it, it's like a... Uh, there, is, there is a towel thief going around. There is a David Blaine thing. It's uh, the invisible man coming in, nicking the towel. Okay. It's those hotel towels, you see. They're, They're extra right. special. Baptiste was wearing his around his neck, just getting a good bit of marketing for the hotel and his... Yeah interview there you go he's got the towel so we will the phantom towel stealer will be reprimanded eight to nine left it's certainly been a little mini break at this level to regroup Cole with the pointed vantage Is Ken Narain? Once again, 
Yes, lad. Eight, nine. That's a fair enough left. decision. Hanging in the balance. This first game. It's a great angle there from the camera just to see how high. Oh, he got oh, the lucky oh, he's bounce. got the, oh. the dead. Nine all. Dead nicking. More of the tell is you need to wally. Yeah, just seeing how high Cole holds the grip up the shaft. Oh, this line. Both players. Good hold from Paul. Got to go wide on the ropes here. It's a great rally, this one. Oh, oh. he's made the error. There's that fist clench from Cole. The width was on the volley. And out, 10-9. Game ball. The amount of times Gawad's able to finish those balls. Just rolling his wrist over slightly. Hitting the top of the tin. Game ball for Cole. A great get. Oh, Cook. Yes, lad. Oh, well, he's going to review this or not? No, he won't review he's it. He's thinking about it. I don't know why he wouldn't review it. No, no, there was just a little bit of distance. Just a bit of it's distance. A little bit further forward, to be fair. So it's probably the correct decision, actually. But oh. it's two what? rallies in a row. I just feel like Gawad's just been a little Ten bit. 10 9, game ball. He's gone for the cross-court nick, but just a little bit passive with it. He needs more head speed. If he's going to commit to it, commit to it, because both times it's sat up, and now, now we're in this situation where Cole's still in it. Another game ball. That's well straightened from Cole. Good pressure from the Kiwi. Oh, he's done it again. No let. So the no let given, again, nothing from Gawad in terms of any type of review. 11 Paul nine, Cole, game to Cole. Cole leads one knows game how to important love. that first game was against such a danger. 20 minutes, some great squash between the two players. Number four seed leading one game to love. A real high quality. First game, 20 minutes in duration as well. A pretty lengthy one. But it was Paul Cole doing quite a lot right, to be honest. His, his line in length was very accurate. He did a great job in stretching out Kareem Abdel Gawad and making that court feel pretty big, putting in a big physical shift for him. And also just starving him of that backhand front left that he absolutely loves. run of points just showing how close it was just to and throwing but that back end a little bit of swift and swift change of momentum three points to Cole and three points to Gawad 
thought jo uh, Cole did a really good job that business end, just controlling the pace, taking it on his terms, steadying the ship, really paying attention to the accuracy that he was hitting to the back. He just played the space really well, Cole. Yeah, I thought it might be a couple of uh, review opportunities Play going in. Gawad, he always so lay seconds. so fair with that, always has been. Peter Creed, who just popped up from somewhere. Former PSA World Tour player. He's based over in the States, but he's uh, over here having a few words with Paul Cole. Gawad winning with proceedings on his own. It's good to see some, some quality from both. And it's got to be proactive, Cole. Doesn't want to open it up too much at all against someone like Gawad. See what Gawad's got in the tank. 20 minute first game, some good tempo towards leads. the end of the first. One game to love. I just feel the crowd, crowd are still simmering, aren't they? They're simmering, they're building their way into it. They don't want to uh, get over aroused and then not having to think for part two of this tremendous bottom half of the draw. Will we get a response from the baby-faced ah, assassin? That's that squat, I'll tell you what. And out. On the backhand, there's nobody that can do that like Gawad. The backhand drop shot, the knees just go down like a, like a frog. It's unbelievable. He got the tin in the first game, he nailed it in that one, and then the response across the tee line. It's like he never went away from the tour. Pretty impressive that he's playing this level and, and moving the yeah. way he is. He, he said it himself, he, he spent majority of that time just sat Too on the low. sofa doing nothing. He had to let that tissue in his foot heal. The more he walked on it, the less chance he was going to have of that happen fast. So well, he was getting all sorts of um, bizarre diagnosis I mean the, the original diagnosis was that he disintegrated his fat pad in his heel there was nothing about plantar fascia and that was what was kind of the word and then he was having to put in extra cushioning and having obviously injections into it and you just have to have a, a good day and a bad day with it and that was actually the wrong diagnosis Oh, <laughs> yes. You've been tangoed. <laughs> Three love. I thought it was Iron Brew, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, probably went over the head of a few of the youngsters. Yeah, anyway, doesn't matter. It's a terrific shot. Oh, there's the soft hands. I mean, it's all happening now. When he's controlling the middle, go at it. Really is danger call. Yeah, nicely done. He made that look quite easy, and it was awkward for Cole. And out one at three. He's feathering it in tight to his body. Yeah, clever angle from Cole, just playing Two, the ball three. back across. Yeah, Go ahead, body. Oh, he did well to get out the way of that one. Very badminton-esque, that one. Oh, 
tight, off tight. That's a great lob. Good movement from Cut. Oh, what's he doing? No oh. lead. Yeah, no dispute there. The old 4 3. Racket round the player ploy. This was good movement from Cole. It was a real shimmy. It was like he was on the rugby pitch there around his opponent to get in. So back into the early stages of this second game, Lisa, the Kiwi. Yeah, he's doing a good job softening off into the front. It's an area of the court that we were speaking about, Gawad's going to be looking to execute when he can, but fair play to Cole. He, he's looking to take the ball in at the right opportunities, but the pace that he's playing at, he's, he's not hitting the ball in as hard as he can, and it's just allowing him to have those soft hands when he needs to go into the front. He's just doing such a good job of controlling the pace. But getting caught out there, an injection of speed from Gawad, and that's the flip side of it. If he does open up that court, that's just what and he's allowing Gawad to do. Just takes a little bit of drop off in quality, not much. And Gawad's in. I really, I really like the backhand rotation from Gawad. He gets his shoulders right round. Yes, lad. Oh, I didn't see him. I didn't see that. Player review. Oh, he's gone for a review. I can't believe it. Have a look at this one. He's Gawad, quite animated. Cole's not touched him there. No, he's certainly not pushing him. No, he's got that wrong. He's he's actually done a pretty good dance move to get right round his body and out of the way. Yeah. And this is where Gawad been missing from the tour. I feel like situations like this where. Stroke to Gawad, decision well, over the there. there was no pushing. Two reviews remain. I feel like we're trying to get the players to play Five the ball in those four. situations. And I actually thought perhaps the time off of tour that that's something that Gawad might have missed. But it could be. I mean, you know, you can't really kind of simulate that in the lounge or on the sofa when you're recovering from a irritating injury. You can't even put any weight on it. First time he's used his review and it's been very beneficial. Nice. Forehand kill working a treat for him. Yeah, it was well well nullified though. Cole quite like to see a bit of pace change from him. Yeah, like I said, he's he's doing a good job of steadying the, the ship is what it feels like, taking the sting out of the ball whenever he can, but I think there's definitely an opportunity to up the pace as well within the rally. Because this is a rhythm that Gawad is not finding too physically demanding. Yeah, great finish. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. You recognise the opportunity was there. And out. Five all. And he's just put it in with a bit more bite on his swing. Just ticking over the 30 minute mark. Well, it's silence. No lead. Yeah, it's not a stroke. Player review call on the no lead decision. Well, Cole just taking a quick look in the coaching corner before he went for this review. That angle is certainly the best one. Sky view. See the. I can't see this being upheld as a no let the ball popping off the side wall and into the path of Goad. It's very strange no let. Yeah, 
So, I mean, it's no let, decision of always the sky view. Review remaining. Change up the angles sometimes. I know it's, a, it's already in the three play with the, the angles, but there's some that are just a waste of time even looking at to actually analyse it through there. I mean, it's looking dangerous here, Gawad. That was really important for Cole. Really important. You know, it's an area of his game that Six when he one. is under a lot of pressure within the rallies, just getting into that front backhand corner, it's a mainstay, the drop shot. It's always been like that for when he was coming through the ranks from outside top 30 in the world. He thought it was down. That definitely looked like it might have clipped the top of the tin. Gawad was through to play that, so he wouldn't be stopping for the sake of it. We, we thought the ball was good. You know, he was through, didn't he? And he saw it and stopped. Seven, six. He should have played it and then appealed. But you can't, fortunately with those, I mean, we can't. 7-6. Yeah, yes, left side. Well, he'll be kicking himself for that. Six hole. Yes, let. Pressure times now. Cole with the first game. Seven, Marginal lead six. at 7 6 to the back end of this second. Goad looking like he's got plenty of energy, and he should do really. It's best of three format. Can he keep the ball away from the tin? Oh, oh what a oh finish. Thank you. Losing his footing again, Cole. Yeah, same side of the court, same type Seven of movement all. as well, coming in at quite a pace with the skid. It's a massive skid. Very slippery. Just straight away look at the ankles every time. He's a bit of a skidder, though. got that off. Beaten by the pace again. Just as he's looking to steady the pace and, and take the Eight, sting out, he, he gets surprised by that one where Goa just jumps and injects. It's just a little bit different to some of the players. Gawad, what he's able to do, and again, just being seriously missed from the talk. Spraying that backhand go out from the back corner. Clipping the side ball first, just as I say, he gets good rotation with the shoulders, which would give you that straight line. a really big point to go add. I feel like if he can, I'm going to call it if he takes this point, he's going to get this game. Down. Oh. oh, by a whisker. By Garfield's whisker. And Carl hadn't read that either. His split step was around the back of the and service box. So a bit of fortune. 
Gawad tinned out the back end of the first. And he's now brought Cole level. Massive amount of pressure on the shoulders of the Egyptian. And I say that, he's such a gentleman though, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, I love it. You know, that's missed as well. Watch this, there's the bounce. Good shot, and there, just the apology. Cole really eight. looking at him. So, really? Are you really sorry? <laughs> he's absolutely <laughs> not. Needs all the points he can get at this business end. I thought we might have seen more use of the front wall from Paul. You know that the lob something he's brought into his game. I haven't seen it much, as, as much as he's controlled the pace and looked to slow it down. It hasn't been with the lift. Ow. I can't believe it. I mean, he literally was hand out. Nine pulling all. Paul Cole all over the place. And then another tin, so two costly errors, bringing Paul Cole level at the back end for the second time in this second game. And that's a lovely squeeze. Can't do any better than that. Middle of the court, nice crunching drive, a lot of cut into the sidewall. Very purposeful. Not risking it close to the top of the tin, and Cole will be serving with match ball, looking for a place now in the quarterfinals. Tomorrow night. Well, Paul Cole. 11 9, a match to Cole. Squeezing it down the backhand side for a second time. 11 9. The back end of this. 11 9. So, a massive, massive performance for him. Really important for the Kiwi. Some real quality squash. But making sure that he kept the ball away from the tin, utilising the side wall. Two love victory for Cole in 40 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, more phenomenal squash. Congratulations to Paul Cole, but let's hear it again, please, for Kareem Abdel Gawad. <laughs> Paul, well played. It's been far too long since we had a chat on this court. Yeah, last time didn't go so, so good. Um, normally I love coming here, and, and last year didn't work out, but uh, no, it's good to be back. Good to be back in front of a great crowd, so many you know, familiar faces here. Uh, it's always enjoyable, so yeah, fantastic to be back. Must be very relieved to get through that match. Kareem is back playing some great stuff, isn't he? Yeah, I, when I seen the draw, I thought, all oh, right, Kareem best of three, first up. Um, but you know, I've done a lot of work last week and I feel like I'm on the right track to, to being myself again. And this is a massive test for me tonight. Very happy with how it went. I uh, still thought I could have played better, but. You know, happy with how I handled the big points, and that's what best of three is all about. It's the end of the games, um, nine alls, eight alls, nine seven. So, yeah, very happy with that. It's very interesting at the top of the rankings right now. This, this week is our strongest draw ever in the tournament's 20 year history. How do you see things boiling up this week? Yeah, obviously, those boys, uh, top three, are battling it out for the top spot. Um, I'll put the rankings fully out of my mind for the rest of the season. Um, I've got a few targets. Uh, personally that I want to get get firing for and um, you know it starts starts here this week for me and 
yeah, looking forward to, to coming here, playing here, enjoying the crowd, the atmosphere, and um, hopefully getting stuck in. Good stuff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it again for Paul Cole through to the quarterfinals. He's after a third title this week. And let's hear it again. Didn't really let the babyface assassin in there at all to attack, particularly in that front left-hand corner where he is so lethal. Just really solid, really accurate, and he'll be pleased to get his campaign underway here at Canadian War. Well, the squash tonight has been of the highest quality. We've uh, gone on seeding with Mezen Hisham hooking his place into the quarterfinals, so that's tremendous fit. The Black Falcon there as we see the updated draw. Just recap last night, Stafra Sal up against Baptiste Massotti, having a massive win, the Frenchman against Marwan El Shabagi. Tarek Moman rematch against Joel Makin. They played only last week at Blackburn. And then Paul Call up against Mezen Hesham in the best of three. So that is a tantalizing affair. Three brilliant matches, and we've still got plenty more squash coming up for you. We're going to be coming in at 8 p.m. local time for part two of the bottom half of the draw. It will be Ali Farag taking on Yao, followed by the All English Affair, just as we see Mohamed El Shabagi, the number five seed, taking on James Wallstrop. A bit of a dream come true, really. James Wallstrop looking forward to that one, and I'm sure Mohamed El Shabagi certainly is. But uh, we're now going to cap off for the first part, and we will be back, myself, Lisa, and Daryl, and Alan Thatcher on the MCing mic for part two of the bottom half of the draw, 8 pm. We'll be back very shortly. <laughs> 